Well, good evening, my brothers and my sisters. I believe we are coming on even now. We're going to get a moment to prepare ourselves for Wednesday night in the Word. What a blessing it is to greet and be with you this evening. Bible study will begin in just a few moments. We're giving folk chance to gather. I pray that you've had a wonderful day today, that God has richly blessed you. And I believe if you're listening to me tonight that he has, that God has richly blessed you and give you favor. Now, let's get ourselves focused. Let's get ourselves focused on the word of God tonight. Make sure you clear your space of distractions for just a moment. Clear your space of distractions if for just a moment. You don't want nothing blocking what the Lord wants to share with you. Get your equipment handy. Get your your notepad or your notebook or your paper. Get your pen, your backup pen in case one runs out so that you can take some notes. This is Bible study. We are in school. We are disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not just followers, but disciples of his. We want to be like him. So we have to study him to know exactly who he is and who he wants us to be. So make sure you get your pen and your paper hand to get your Bible. Always nice to have Bible, or have your Bible with Bible, at a Bible study. Amen. Clean your glasses so you can see clearly what you're writing. Let's be prepared. If you're looking on Facebook Live or on YouTube or want you uh, share it, like and share, like and share. Get some other folk tuned in. Let folk know that Gospel Tabernacle is on the air and it is time for Wednesday night in the word. Wednesday night in the word. What a blessing. We're going to begin in prayer. In just about 30 seconds or so, just giving other people a chance to gather. Uh, I, I pray that you're hearing us well. If you're hearing us well, text it out. Say, I'm, I'm hearing you, Bishop. We can hear you clearly tonight. We want to make sure there's no distractions on our end to make sure you're getting the word of God tonight. Uh, the Lord is simply good to us. He's blessed us and kept us through seen and unseen danger. And for all of that in this, we give God praise. Come on, let's take a moment and go into prayer. I know you've been praying already today. Let's pray one more time. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bow before you and we thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you that you have been kind and compassionate to us. You have given us another day. And in this day, you've given us grace, strength, wisdom, protection, provision life. We pray now, Father, that as we seek to get into your word, that you will open our minds and our hearts that we might see what we have not seen, that we might glean from the floor of the word those needed vitamins that will make us stronger in you. Bless our understanding. We pray now for illumination of your word. Bless all of those that are already tuned in and those that are finding their way here. In Jesus' name we do pray, amen. Again, let me welcome you. I am Reginald Kennedy, Bishop and Senior Pastor of the Gospel Tabernacle Baptist Church in the beautiful city of Baltimore, Maryland, and you have found Wednesday Night in the Word. This is our opportunity for us to come together and study the Word of God together as a family, and we thank you for tuning in and being a part of this, of this virtual Bible study. You're in class now. Wherever you are, you're in the room. And the Spirit of the Lord is in the room. Got your Bibles with you. We've been, we've been dissecting uh, the Beatitudes. We've been in, in the book of Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. And tonight I want to look at just one verse out of Matthew chapter 15. And that's verse number 13. We finished the Beatitudes, verse number 13. It says this, ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost her savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is therefore good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Our, our general lesson as we've been studying the Beatitudes, it's, it was a, a journey into blessed living, a journey into blessed living. And tonight, I want to focus on that one verse, but I want to use this theme, making a difference in the world. Write that down somewhere. 
making a difference in the world. Tonight I want to study that one verse, Matthew 5, 13, making a difference in the world. If, if the eight Beatitudes we just studied are a reality in our lives, then Jesus says, because we are living those blessings out, we are the salt of the earth. Now, come on, let's not bypass that. I know you've heard that before, but Jesus says, if you are living out, since you have the Beatitudes activated in your life, those blessings, you are the salt of the earth. Salt is of no use if it remains in the shaker. To be effective, salt has to come out of the shaker. We may all have some salt on our table, but it does no good sitting in the salt shaker. It only does its good if it comes out of the shaker. The same is true of the Christian life. To make a difference in this world, we must not just be salt at church. We must be salt at home, work, at school, listen to me, everywhere. We must be salt everywhere. In Jesus' prayer the night before his crucifixion, he said that he had brought glory to God the Father by completing the work the Father gave him to do. That was in John chapter 17, verse 4. Then he prays this in John 17, 18. He says, as God sent him into the world, so he sends me into the world. This statement not only applies to the original disciples, but to you and to me. This means that we are being, that we bring glory to God. Listen to me, saints. We bring glory to God, the Father, by completing the work that he has sent us to do, which is to live out the Beatitudes. We just studied them. To live them. He sent us to do that. As a result, if we live it, we become the salt of the earth. And now there are five, and let me break it down. There are at least five ways that I can perceive tonight. There are five ways that we can make a difference as being salt in the earth. Five ways that we can make a difference while we are being salt in the earth. Are you ready? First of all, by being, um, by, by, by the way we radiate. Write that down. We can be salt by the way we radiate, the way we radiate. Uh, after more than 2,000 years, salt is still the primary way of bringing good flavor out of food. Over 2,000 years, salt is still one of the primary ways to bring good flavor out of food. Being salt of the earth means that we bring good flavor to life. That's what we do as Christians. We bring, we bring the flavor. Uh, we live in a very unhappy world. I don't have to tell you that, but I did. As Christians, we should bring out happiness wherever there is depression and sadness. We, when we show up, we should bring out happiness and, and joy. The Beatitudes are about being, being blessed. Uh, the word blessed translates divine delight. Blessed, divine delight. Jesus not only came uh, so our sins would be forgiven, but he also came that we might experience divine delight. Uh, do you have that? From, from, from him. How do we experience this? John 15, 11. John 15, 11 says, These things have I spoken unto you that 
my joy may remain in you and that your joy might be fulfilled. Jesus said, I come to give you that. That's what you should have. Every one of us that are a born again child of God should be filled with the joy of the Lord. The word joy translate into delight or gladness. We should have it. In the world in which we live, people try their best uh, to put their, their unhappiness or their happiness in pleasures, possessions, uh, parties, positions. You know how people try to make themselves filled with joy. Therefore, uh, the thing that can attract non-believers to Christ like a, like a jewel is the joy and the gladness we radiate. Since the world is basically sad and looking for a party, they should see in us the joy of the Lord and that radiation of the joy that comes off of us I should be seen by the unbeliever to draw them. You, you can never be, uh, you, can, you, can, you can bring favor uh, to an unhappy situation. You can, you can do that right now. Let me tell you real quick. If you look at somebody with a great big smile, if you're at some distance and you don't have your mask on, and you put a smile on your face when you greet people, that radiant, a true smile, that radiant from you is affected them. And it actually makes them want to, many, respond in kind. It's hard for you to share that kind of joy and they not try to mimic it even if they don't have it. It may be difficult to do, but the Lord gives us strength and power to do that. It is God's will that you do this because it is a commandment. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. First Thessalonians 5, 16. It says this, I am to rejoice evermore. And you, you read it, First Thessalonians 5, 16. It's a command that I ought to rejoice evermore. But it's a command. Uh, it, the word joy, rejoice, uh, means happy or, or being joyful. Uh, if you don't obey the commands of God, it's sin. So if you're not joyful, it, inadvertently, you're, it's a sin. And that sounds a little strange, but he commands us to be joyful evermore. What should come off of you, child of God, who is possessed by the Spirit of God, as salt, it should be the joy of the Lord. Because the truth is, whatever situation we're in, the joy of the Lord makes a difference. The joy of the Lord makes, makes, makes a difference. What a difference we could make if we just radiate joy. Everybody don't do that. There is a, a, a cartoon character. Charlie Brown has some friends. One of his friends walk and there's a dust cloud that's with him. And whenever he comes into the room, this dust cloud comes with him. And we that are members of the body of Christ, we can't be guilty of bringing the cloud. We have to be guilty of bringing joy. When you come into the room, the atmosphere should shift to the positive because of who's in you. Okay, all right. So we, 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 we make a difference uh, uh, by the way we radiate. We make a difference by the way we communicate. That's number two, how we're salty. By the way we communicate. In Jesus' day, there was, uh, there was no refrigeration. Jesus didn't have a refrigerator. It was not invented then. Uh, therefore, salt was used as a preserver to keep fish and other meat from decaying. Salt was a preserver. As Christians, we are able to be like salt, preserving our culture from decay. God has worked it in us that we can help 
preserve our culture that we are in from its rapid decay if we are salty. Few things re, are, re, reveal our decay in culture like our communication. Our communication really can show you how our culture is decaying. Listen to how people talk now. It's a clear evidence of a decaying culture. The language of our culture has become more and more uh, uh, vulgar, profane, and uh, uh, irreverent. We, 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 should, we shouldn't talk like this because of the, of the command in Colossians chapter 4, verse 6. Colossians 4, 6 says, My speech should always be with grace, seasoned with salt. Y'all read that. When you get a chance, Colossians chapter 4, verse 6, the A, B of the verse. It says, my speech should always be with grace seasoned with salt. Okay, thank you, Lord. If our speech is, is, is gracious, it will be kind and compassionate and caring and the opposite of being rude and crude and hateful. The saints' conversation should never be rude, crude, and hateful. Whether communicating with our spouse, our children, co-workers, fellow students, or whoever, our speech should always be seasoned with grace. Okay, okay. this is one of the ways we become more like Christ. By, by doing what Luke chapter 4, verse 22a, the Lord says this. Luke 4, verse 22, the A part, it says, everyone speaks well of him and marvel at his gracious words. Everyone speaks well of him and marvel at his gracious words. They're talking about Jesus. And we should mimic that in our own life. Your communication, as people describe the way you talk, it should bring grace, kindness, and love because you're salt. If our speech is always gracious and seasoned with salt, our words will be pure and wholesome and not filthy and violent and irreverent. When I communicate, Communication begins to decay. When our communications begin to decay, our speech should be a preserving power. The way we talk should be a preserving power to lift people from decay. Got to mind how you talk. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 20, 28. Ephesians 4, 28 kind of helps us uh, with, with, with just knowing that. Now, so we, 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 we can make a difference uh, in, in the world by the way we radiate. We can be salty by the way we communicate. We can be salty by the way we communicate. Here's a, here's a third way. Uh, by the way we refuse to deviate. We refuse to deviate off track. We are to be the salt of the earth. Salt or sodium, sodium chloride, is the standard compound in salt. Sodium chloride, that's what salt is. Therefore, it is always salty, but it can become contaminated. Sodium chloride. Jesus says when it becomes contaminated, it is therefore good for nothing but to be cast out and be trodden under the foot of man. When your salt is contaminated, it is of no use. In ancient times, uh, contaminant, contaminated salt was, was, was spread out on soil on a roof in order for it to harden to, to, to stop it from leaking. 
they would put salt on top of the dirt on the roof and it would harden and it would stop leaks. Um, Multi-purpose use. The flat roof was, was always used as a, a, then a playground or a place to enjoy the cool breeze and the hot days. They would go up on that roof after the salt had hardened it so that they could stand there. That's an amazing to, to me. Uh, if, if we become contaminated by, by diverting from the biblical teachings of, of God about marriage and sex and morality and hopefulness, we become of no use to God in the world. If we shift ourselves away from the truth of God and live any other kind of way, our saltiness has lost its savor. And Jesus says, it ain't nothing good to be walked on. It's just, you can just walk on it now. Put it on a flat roof, let it get hard, and it can be trodden under the foot of a man. Jesus does not call us to be sugar. Did, did you read the Bible? He says we are salt. It didn't say we were sugar. God did not call us to be sugar. He called us to be salt. Salt sometimes irritates. Okay, okay, okay. That's why we uh, will uh, be persecuted and harassed. If we really are salty in this culture, we are not always going to be accepted because salt can sometimes irritate. Have you ever, have you ever, I had the pleasure in here in Baltimore of eating some steamed crabs that were loaded down with Obey seasoning. And one of the chief ingredients in Obey seasoning is salt. And after you finish those crabs, you go and wash your hands, but you didn't wash them as good as you should. And underneath some of your nail or part of your finger, there was still some of that Obey seasoning. And by chance, you wipe your eyes uh, for some reason or another and you realize quite right away that you had not completely washed the salt from your hands because it irritated uh, the eye. When we are salt of the earth, sometimes our standard of living will be an irritation. Even though we possess the joy and our joy is radiant, sometimes the truth of God's word will just irritate. Salt can be, can, be, can be that, but we cannot deviate because people are irritated. Don't change the way you live to make other people laugh, happy with you. You have to live a life to bring God glory. God wants us to live so we can bring him glory, not make a friend or two that is fair weather. Jesus did not call us to be sugar. One other characteristic of salt what happens when you put salt on a cut or a wound? And I hope you never did that. It stings. It burns, really. If you are the salt of the earth, there will be times our words will sting and hurt, even though we're speaking them with grace and love. The recipient, it might sting. Because of the standard in which God lives is above the culture in which we live. Proverbs chapter 27 verse 6 says, Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Sometimes, sometimes, faithful are wounds. So that means that a friend who is truly salt of the earth will tell you some things sometimes that you may not want to hear. It may even be woundful in order to be helpful. Now, 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 I, 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 I walk light in teaching this area because some folk have no bridle on their tongue and they say whatever they want to say out of their mouth thinking they're helping people. And really, you are condemning and judging and cutting with no purpose of lifting. 
Somebody say, Lord, I thank you for putting a bridle on my tongue. Come on, say it. Lord, I thank you. Type it in your tongue. Lord, thank you for controlling my tongue. There have been many times when the Spirit of God arrested you because what you were thinking for the moment wouldn't have spoke healing. It would have put salt in a wound that needed to be healed. So, we can make a difference by our, by our radiate, our communication, by refusing to deviate. We can make a difference by the way we captivate. I write these words. I try to do all my rhyme in, in my Bible study, but by the way we captivate, captivate. What happens if you put a little salt in your mouth? What happens if you put a little salt in your mouth? Uh, you you become thirsty because salt causes thirst. I know you don't know this, and you might not ever see this anymore, but if you ever go to a bar, I know you don't go to bars, but if you go to places like that, they often have salted peanuts and salted pretzels free in little bowls on the bar for you to enjoy while you're enjoying your beverage. Because the salted peanuts or salted pretzels or salted potato chips will increase your thirst and will make you order more to drink. It's a chemical reaction in your mouth. Salt makes you thirsty. Jesus makes people thirsty for God whether no matter what their religion might be, no matter, he just makes them thirsty. When, when folks see God in us, it should create a, a draw, a captivating effect within them. Whether they're sinners or not, especially sinners. Remember Jesus, the way Jesus was acting, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, 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 Nebuchadnezzar uh, wanted to be in, in John chapter 3. Even though he was a sinner, he was drawn, he was drawn to him. If, if we are like salt in the earth, we will make people spiritually thirsty. That's why 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 gives us this command. 1 Peter 3, 15 says this, I should always be prepared to answer anyone who asks me for a reason for the hope I have. Because people will be drawn to you. They will be thirsty to know a little bit about the God that you serve. Because you are salt, you are making other people gravitate towards you. May ask you questions you may not know the answer to. But be ready to give them a response about your hope in God. Don't be afraid to say, listen, I don't know every Bible verse. All I know is I asked the Lord Jesus Christ to come into my life. I just believed that God sent his son according to the word of God. His only begotten son. He sent him to earth that I might have eternal life through his sacrifice on the cross and his resurrection to pay my sin debt. And now with inside of me is the gift he sent, which was the Holy Spirit. And it's reacting in my life in such a way it is changing me from a moth to a butterfly. And he's making the goodness in me be elevated and everything that was negative be crucified. Be ready to share that with folks. It is magnetic. It draws them in. When we are like salt on the earth, all kinds of people will be drawn to Christ and will ask you questions about your faith. When, when was the last time someone asked you about your hope in Christ? When was the last time somebody asked you anything about your faith in God? The Bible tells us uh, to make the most of our time when we share about the Lord. Uh, you don't have to have a degree. Share from your personal walk with him. To do that, we must always be prepared to share our faith. Uh, to, listen, if you don't know how to share your faith, got your pen? Got your pen? Write this down. This is the Roman road. This is the Roman road. Write this down. Romans chapter, in this order, 
This is the order. I want you to read these scriptures to folk. Somebody says, I, I want to know about God. I don't even know if I need God. Read them these verses in this order. It's called the Roman Road to Salvation. You ready? Write it down. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. That's the first one. Romans 3, 23. Then Romans 6, 23. Then you read them Romans 5, 8. Then you read Romans 10, verses 9 and 10. I'll read it again. Here's the Roman road. Help people come to Christ. Talks about your faith. First start with Romans 3, 23. Then you skip over to Romans 6, 23. Then you go back to Romans 5, 8. Then you end up at Romans 10, verses 9 and 10. This should help us in, in sharing our faith because people are attracted to us. So here it is. I'm almost finished. Let's go. What a difference we can make. We can radiate with salt, communicate, don't deviate. We can captivate folk by, by seeing us and by, and by the way we rededicate. By the way we rededicate over and over to the call of Christ. At times, we all get off course. Okay? Uh, in our spiritual life and, and no longer are really salty. If you've been with God for a long time, there have been times when you were really seasoned and there are other times when you were not. Let's be honest. Have you ever lost your saltiness by being pulled into the world by speech or from honesty, morality, all kinds of things deviate us. The flesh gets strong and makes demands. And the eye gate and the ear gate and thoughts and images start to drift us away from God. If, if so, how can we regain our saltiness? I want to talk, I want to end our Bible study with folks. I need, I need to regain it. When, I, when our lives are um, torn away by the ways of the world, we cease to become salt in the world. Because the Bible says, and if the salt had lost the savor. So the Bible wouldn't have said that if it wasn't possible for you to lose it. Your savor, not your salvation. Then we need to pray like David prayed. In Psalm 51 and 1, to be part of it. According unto my, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Uh, you know what? Repentance is still in order. I know you saved and sanctified, but you still can repent. We still stumble. And listen, some of the things we do isn't, aren't, uh, isn't a stumble. It's an outright purposeful step away we make a decision in our flesh to step into our flesh pray like David blot out Lord blot out my transgressions the Hebrew word translate blot out uh, means to ultimately wipe away and erase that's what blot out means to wipe away and erase when I was in college I had to do my term papers, and when I wrote my term papers, we had typewriters. I know some of you young people that are listening to me now may not have ever really seen one, but we had typewriters, manual typewriters. Uh, but I got a little uh, high class. I had a typewriter that had an eraser ribbon inside. So when I made a mistake in the keystroke, I could push this other key, and a little white-out piece of tape would come and block over top of the letter that I just typed. It was whited out. But the thing about a whiteout, it didn't erase it. It just covered it. If you could hold the paper up to light and look through it, and you could still see the error letter. The reader couldn't see it because it was whited out, or even the whiteout that we use that we paint on. It covered it. It didn't remove it. Thing I love about the blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus did more than cover my sin 
it blotted, it removed them from my record. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe let me stay to study because that, that's a shouty material there. So when we when we find ourselves drifting, uh, we can pray, ask God to blot out our transgressions. When we pray and ask God to blot out or to cleanse uh, uh, all of our sins so that we can be salty again, it is not enough to merely confess our sins according to uh, Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. 28, Proverbs 28, 13. It says, I must forsake my sins to receive mercy. So it's not just asking God to forgive. I got to turn away from them. See, repentance has a great part on our part to do. It's a turning away. It's an earnest sorrowful, but then a change of behavior. It's a turning from that which, so whatever made me drift away from being salty, I have to turn from, from that behavior. This means we must commit we, we, we must not commit that sin over and over again. This, this is what the Bible calls repentance, which means a turning away from sin. So Jesus says, ye are the salt of the earth. He doesn't say you are the goal of the earth or that you are a diamond of the earth. He says we are salt. A, a very common substance. By using common people like you and me, God makes a big difference in the world. Regular folk, that's what we are. God uses regular folk. Jesus took 11 uneducated, country-speaking disciples and change the world so that it would never be the same. We want to be the same in the hand of God, no matter who you are or where you're from. Paul says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. You can make a difference in this world. You can be salty by your radiance. Change the atmosphere. Come on, smile. Even right now, practice. Face stuck in somber. Smile. It may not be nobody in the room with you, but so practice. You can practice lifting those beautiful big cheeks. Let Practice showing two teeth, three teeth, four teeth. How many teeth you got left? In. Practice bringing that joy into the room because it's inside of you. Communicate. Make sure our conversation be with grace, uplifting and kind and compassionate. Even though you know when you lift up God in your voice, sometimes folk will ache because the truth is like salt. Refuse to deviate. Don't let nobody turn you around. Don't let any situation, don't let any promise of world greatness, money, cash, or love deviate your journey with the master. What does it gain a man? What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? What would you give in exchange for that? Nothing. <clears throat> so make sure you don't deviate. Captivate. You, you, listen, folk are watching you. They're watching the way you live your life. They're watching the way you deal with adversities, especially. And they're watching the way you express joy and make sure you rededicate. Whenever you find yourselves a little weak or slipping, go back to the rock who is higher than I. Make sure you go back to him and ask him to increase that salt level in you so that you might be bring the goodness, the flavor, the joy out of everything God's connect you with because of the beatitudes because of the blessed way you live your life you are now called salt so be it be it be salt regular common element 
but it affects everything it touches. So tonight, with the word of God, make sure that you, make sure you are using that power and that strength that God has given you. You are the salt of the world. God designed us to bring the flavor to everything that's around us. Get out the shaker. We like shaking salt on each other in church, but you have to be salt at the house, school, on your job, in your neighborhood, everywhere you go. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for your word. It is richer than we can even unlatch, but we thank you for giving us a designation. You did not call us shining stars or gold bars, but you said we have been called to be salt, to be preservers, to be enhancers, to bring about flavor of joy. I'm asking God in the name of Jesus, you would activate the salt level in us. Make us more like the word is calling us to be. We want to be like your son, Jesus. If we've taught anything tonight, God, in error, we pray for your forgiveness. God, wipe the slate clean. Pray for our ignorance is this abundance, but your word is true. Let your people get only the truth of your word, but let us be better tomorrow than we were yesterday on purpose. If there's any that listen to our Bible study tonight that haven't accepted you, save your Holy Spirit, walk them down, shake them up until they give their whole heart to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for pausing with me for about 38 minutes tonight in our Bible study. Thank you for your continuous support. Would you do that? Could you continue to support this ministry? If this Bible study has been a blessing to you, if the church has been a blessing to you, would you pick one of these ways and sow a seed? And would you please do that tonight? You can mail it in. You can give online. You can text it. See, take a look at that. Text it, or you can uh, be give by give a fire or cash app. Take a look at that if you would. Take a screenshot of that if you want to do it later. Please give. Your sewing gives us the ability to keep our, these electronic ways up to date so that we can come to you wherever you are around the world. Your sowing of seed into this ministry is helping us to continue the ministry work of the kingdom every diamond dollar is appreciated so let me thank you in advance for your giving listen my brothers and sisters this is this is our men's month here at gospel tabernacle we're just celebrating the men of our church the men of our community the men in our society you're welcome to worship with us we worship in person and stream but we're in person at 9 a.m our nine o'clock service is an in-person worship service we ask that you would bring your mask and come on and be a part of our worship experience. We have a seat for you right after the worship service at about 1030. Uh, our church school begins. And you can go to Bible study there and in our church school. And then 1130, that's over. And then we stream our broadcast again live at 11, out at 11 o'clock. But we want you to be a part of our 10 o'clock, our 9 o'clock, <laughs> our 9 o'clock worship experience. We want you to come on in and be a part. The doors are open at, at 8, you can come on in, find a seat of your choice, and be ready to get into the presence of God. There's nothing like worshiping with the saints. And, and in this season of coronaviruses and other viruses and monkeypox and all other kind of other things that are going around, we have to learn how to worship in this season. So protect yourself. Get, if you haven't been vaccinated, get vaccinated. If you haven't gotten your second booster, get that as soon as you can. Get the children vaccinated. Get your mask. Wear them in indoor settings. Protect yourself and others. Listen, let me encourage you also, tomorrow is the first day of early voting. Tomorrow is the first day of early voting, if I'm not mistaken. Please, please, everyone, vote in this season. I'm going to say more about it Sunday. Everyone is to vote in this season. Do not let the spirit of apathy settle in you. Don't say it is what it is. Your voice, your vote makes a difference. Use it. Use it to the glory of God. Use it to the glory of God. Listen, 
I pray right now the blessings of God upon you. May the Lord bless your life, your family, your going out, your coming in. May he sanctify you wholly. And in the end, may he save us all. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a good night and a better tomorrow. Bless you.